Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a sensor interface circuit. Now, that's the circuit you see on my breadboard. Now, when you build your own sensor, the output of the sensor is usually pretty low, and you need to amplify it up high enough to feed into a microcontroller or some logic circuits. So, that's what this circuit does. Now, for demonstration purposes, I have some piezo material on a cantilever, and I have a lead weight on the end. So, if I give it a flex, she'll vibrate. You can see my circuitry is picking up the vibrations, the, the small voltages uh, generated by the piezo. And that's amplified into a logic level output, and that's what's feeding the LED. Now it's very sensitive. If I tap on the desk, picks that up. If I stomp on the floor, picks that up. So it's picking up a very minute voltage from the piezo and generating a logic level signal so we can feed that directly into a microcontroller or some logic circuitry. So if you have a sensor that you're building, this is a good interface. It's a very simple interface. It even has a, a sensitivity control. That's what the pot is for, so I can adjust the sensitivity. So it's a, it's a circuit that you could actually build very easily to interface your circuit to your microcontroller. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the output of my sensor interface circuit. And I'll flex the piezo uh, cantilever and we'll see the output. I'll give it a flex. There it is there. So you can see we're getting rail to rail output. We'll flex it again. So it's taking the minute, minute signal from the piezo and giving a rail to rail logic level output. Okay, I've connected a half-wave dipole antenna up to my sensor interface. You can see the antenna there. And it's tuned to the cellular phone band. And I have a germanium diode at the feed point, so that's going to feed down a voltage down to the, to the circuitry, so we'll get about 300 millivolts. So I'll get my cell phone out, I'll make a call, and see if she can pick up the transmission. So there's the call being initiated. That's end of transmission signal. I'll call it again. The number you've got not available in your area at this time. End of transmission. So, so the little circuitry is sensitive enough to pick up cell phone uh, transmissions. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my sensor interface circuit. And the heart of the circuit is an op amp, a CA3140. Now that's a CMOS op amp, but any general purpose op amp will work in this circuit. Now the op amp is configured in comparator mode. As you can tell, there's no feedback resistors. So as a comparator, if the voltage on pin 3, non-diverting input, is higher than the voltage on pin 2, the output pin 6 will go high, it'll go to VCC. Now if the voltage on pin 2 is higher than the voltage on pin 3, the output on pin 6 will go low, will go to ground. Now the difference between pins 2 and pins 3 voltage can be very small, could be millivolts, but that will be amplified by the open loop game of the op amp and I'll drive the output either high to VCC or low to ground. Now we have a voltage divider, a 22k ohm voltage divider splitting VCC into half. So we got half VCC fed into pins 2 and into pins 3. Now one of them will be a little bit higher depending which one which will drive the output either high or low. So that's where we use our offset null pot. And we adjust the null pot until the output goes low when there's no input. So now it's set up to receive some input. Now when we get some input, it could be very small, it could be a few millivolts. They'll be fed into pin 3. Now pin 3 will be a little bit higher than pin 2. And it'll drive the output pin 6 high and we'll turn on the LED. Now the input signal coming into pin 3, we don't want to get that into pin 2 because that will just cancel itself out. So we have an 82k ohm resistor, and we have a capacitor on pin 2 that will filter any signal, input signal, trying to get into pin 2, it will shunt it to ground. So that's basically the circuit there. So instead of this LED here, you can feed pin 6 into your microcontroller. Okay, I built myself a little simple sensor. It's a little pressure sensor, and I'm using some anti-static foam that you use to put your ICs on. And I cut a little piece out. And I sandwiched it between two connectors, and I have a little voltage divider with a battery, a 9-volt battery, and a resistor. Now I'm feeding that into my circuit. 
So now if I apply pressure to the foam, you can see the LED come on. So it's taking that little bit of voltage coming out of the foam to indicate pressure. So that's a little simple pressure sensor that you can make or if you have your own ideas for your own sensor that has a small output and you can feed it into the interface circuit so you can feed it into your microcontroller. Okay, here's the schematic of my little pressure sensor in case you want to build it. So basically we have a voltage divider. Now the anti-static foam has a resistance of about 40k when it's unpressed and then when you squeeze it, it could drop down to about 20k depending on the type of anti-static material that you have. So, so basically we have the foam anti-static resistance in series with a 47k and we have a 9 volt battery across the two and the output is fed to the to the sensor interface. So when we squeeze the when we squeeze the anti-static the resistance will change and we'll get a pulse fit into the sensor interface and that will trigger the LED on the sensor interface circuit. Okay now you know how this circuit works so you can keep this in your circuit toolbox in case you need a circuit like this when you're building your own sensor. And here's the pot that you saw in the schematic it's my offset null pot. You can see I could force it output either high or low. So if you put it just on a transition, that will be the most sensitive. So you could adjust it to whatever you want. You could have it least sensitive or really sensitive, depending on what kind of sensor that you're driving. Now I have a little wire hooked up to the input. So even if when I touch it, the stray 60 hertz I'm picking up on my body is being triggered and I'm getting an output on my LED from the 60 hertz. So it's a pretty sensitive little device. So I hope this video gives you some ideas how to build your own sensors and your own sensor interface.